Hey guys, it's Max here, the Fast Talking Flipper. Angie is inside. Uh, she's actually doing some video editing right now for another video that I just filmed earlier today. But I did get some updates on what is going to go on with the box that got returned to us. So, to go into the full detail, we sold a Fluke Multimeter on eBay. I picked it up for $200 off of Facebook Marketplace and right away realized that it was a high dollar piece. Multimeters can be hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. If you don't know what a multimeter is, what it is is a, uh, a, a it's literally a multiple meter. It can read multiple things. It's used usually for reading electric resistance, uh, DC, AC. I use it a lot personally in automotive for being able to determine what the voltage is across a circuit or what the resistance is in a circuit or if a circuit is open or closed, so on and so forth. Some of these things can be very high dollar because they're very precise and they can measure a whole lot of different things. So this one was one of those expensive ones. It retailed somewhere north of $500. We listed it on eBay as a brand new in the package item for $499 plus shipping. Took it about a week, but it sold. Not the greatest margin, 200 into 500. You normally want to see more margin than that, but the dollar amount was worth it. You know, selling and du more than doubling your money in just under a week, I'll do that all the time. If I could do that once a week, I'm okay with it because we'll let this other little stuff trickle out at higher margins and fill in the gaps. So don't pass those things up. Don't look at something and say, that's $200. I want to pass on it because it's too expensive. If it sells quickly, pick it up. That's my suggestion. But with this particular item, we sold it for $500. Shipped it out immediately, everything was good. It arrives and the buyer immediately sends us a return request. In the return request, it says, we've opened the item, we've looked at it, and we've decided that it's not what we needed to buy. It's not correct for our lab. Indicates that they ordered it for you know some kind of laboratory experience, but they ordered the wrong one. We don't offer free returns. We aren't big enough yet to where we feel like we would benefit from free returns. I don't know that we'll ever get there. I could see us getting to the point where we allow for returns with the buyer paying for the return shipping. If you want to return something to us in the same condition that you got it in, maybe we would allow for that, but you're going to pay the shipping back to us. We're not going to pay it. We're just not going to do that because because to figure that into our costs, we, we just don't want to be there. Um, so I don't think that we'll get there. But in this particular case, they opened the return request. And after thinking about it for just a couple of minutes, I realized that we now have an open box item that they have. And it's now worth considerably less. I went through and looked. And this item sells open box, not new, for somewhere about $50 to $100 less than what a brand new in the package item was. I didn't necessarily want to deny it, but I, I decided to deny the return and immediately declined it. We weren't obligated to take it because it did arrive as it was described. Everything was good. So we immediately declined it. Thought that that was the end of the story. Come to find out that was January the 11th. Today, I, what is today? I think today is January the 18th. Yes, uh, January the 17th. So six days later, I go out and I check the mail and there's a box and I find the box to say the word refused on the top and it shows a return to sender label on it. When I peel that label off, I get the address and we go through and we look at our orders because we had no idea what was in it. I didn't want to open it. I didn't want to disturb it. I wanted to figure it out. And when we found out what it was, it was that multimeter, obviously. So that was rather peculiar. We inspected the box. We saw that the box had been resealed. When we ship our items, I seal the boxes, I weigh them, and then I put a label on. So there's no chance that there's going to be tape over my labels. We use one of the thermal printers and we stick the labels onto the box. So at the very worst, the label's going to stick over the tape because the box is already sealed. So this particular box had tape over the label because when I put the label on, it touched the tape 
when they resealed it, they had to cover part of the label. So we knew immediately that this has been resealed, that this was not an, it, actually a refused box. Coupled with the message from eBay where they said that we would like to return this, we knew that we were being strong-armed. We knew we were being duped. And in that, we didn't know what to do. So I contacted eBay for business. eBay's ruthless. I tell you what, we had a great conversation with a young lady on eBay for business. And what they said was, you're covered. You did what you were supposed to do. What they did after the fact, after you closed and declined to return, that's on them. They should have never returned it. You're not responsible for it. Now, my concern is that, and I'll, I'll show you some of the pop-ups on the screen, is in different areas within eBay, it shows different statuses. It shows delivered, it shows returned, and if you click on the actual tracking, it shows refused. So it's a little weird. I needed some clarification from eBay. And with that, I did get clarification. And they, in multiple different places, they said, you're covered. You don't have to worry about it. I don't know how to feel about this whole situation because now I have a product that I'm, that I, I, I got paid for. eBay told me to sell it again. They told me to list it and resell it again. Uh, I don't know that they understood that it was a $500 item. I would assume that they would have clicked on the link that I sent them for the item. Uh, I gave them all the evidence that I had to support how I felt weird about the whole situation. And they said to resell it. Um, talking into or talking to a couple of my local friends who sell a lot on eBay. They said to resell it. They said, hey, you get screwed enough and you're going to get screwed over the course of being on eBay. You're going to lose some, some fights on eBay here and there. And I've lost some fights in the past and I've won some good fights in the past on when people try to screw you over and, and, and you're going you're gonna to take them and you're going to give them. And they said, you know, take this as a win. But man, this is the biggest win. Well, I would say the second biggest win that I've ever had. And it's a weird one. It, it feels very strange. The other win that I had that was a bigger one, I, he, he, the guy sent me back something that was not what I sent him. And I had a serial number on it and we had to file police charges. But that's neither here nor there. So this one's a little bit different because I had nothing to do with the situation. So now what do I do? Do I resell this item? I, I feel like I am, I have should. The other half says, maybe I should reach out to him and say, hey, if you want to pay shipping back, I'll, I'll send this back to you and you can recoup it. Um, that's probably what I should do. My I want to get into heaven side says that I should do that. You know, I want to do the right thing. Uh, but at the same time, I want to make money. And I don't know how... I guess ethically, that's not incorrect. Morally, it's probably incorrect. So my reason for recording this video is, what would you do? You know, how would you handle this situation? Where would you sit with this particular situation, given that you have another high dollar item and now you have no money into it? I've already made my profit off of it. I've already turned that over. I have zero dollars into this $500 item. 500 bucks isn't isn't a small chunk of change. Uh, after fees and, and everything, I'll probably net $400 in my pocket. And, you know, after you do take, pay taxes out of it, that's 280 bucks, give or take. Uh, I always call 30% on taxes, 20% on fees. So that gives you $280 in your pocket, 280 bucks on half an hour's worth of work because we've already got the listing up. It's not even going to be half an hour. I've already got a box. It's ready to go. I've already got the listing. It would take me 30 seconds to sell this again. $280 for 30 seconds worth of work. Have it to go through the listing, relist it, sell similar, do whatever. And then once it sells, print a shipping label. It's all said and done. So it would take zero time to make $280. You tell me. Go down below, comment, tell me what you think. Uh, I want to hear what your friends think because I think eBay is ruthless on this and telling me to, to sell it again. I'm not exactly saying that 
I don't disagree, but I'm not saying that I do agree. So tell me what you think. Share this with your friends. See what they think. Talk it over with them and see what other people think. And, and get back to me on it because I want to hear what everybody thinks out there. But as always, remember, like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notifications when I come out with new videos. We're going to try in 2023 to do these more regularly and, and get a couple videos out per week. Let you know what we're doing here. Uh, update on the shed. The shed uh, didn't come last week. I don't know. I'm just missing my 14 by 32 shed, and I'm sad. Um, we got the stump out. Everything is out. It's ground down. It's We're ready to accept it. The only thing I have to do is pull out a fence post and move a car. The car can move at any time. It did take me half an hour to get the car moved um, and, and pull the fence post out. It's going to be the hardest part. I should see it this week. I don't know. Classes start back up tomorrow for me. So I'm going to be busy tomorrow, but uh, Thursday and Friday maybe it should show up. I don't know. We'll find out. Once it does show up, I'm going to trench for running wire out to it, uh, running electric out to it, and then get started with electricity. Uh, hopefully get it insulated within uh, a week or so and get some heat in there because it's going to get cold. It's January. It's got to get cold. Man, it was 60-something degrees today here in Cincinnati. Unbelievable. So I was able to work out here for a little while in the music barn, whereas we've been trying to work in the house because it is so cold. Anyway, I'm rambling. You tell me what you think. Let me know. Comment down below. Like, share, do all that kind of stuff. And we'll see you on the next one.